composition of matter question slash notes. We're gonna use the slides here to answer these questions. And then we're gonna create this diagram on a piece of paper. And I want you guys to have drawn this diagram. So we know that all matter is in one of these two categories, either mixtures or substances. And so we'll, uh, we'll get into it. First question, what are the two kinds of pure substances? And you can see that right here in the diagram, right? We have elements, we have compounds. And that's our first note here, pure substance. It's a type of matter with a fixed composition that can't be separated by physical change. This includes elements and it includes compounds. So substances are either elements or compounds. Anything that is a mixture is not a pure substance. Okay, so if we have, yeah, anything that's a mixture is not a pure substance. And we're gonna use the term substance, the term mixture. We're gonna use these as very specific terms. It's a very scientific use of the word mixture here. Okay, not just like what we're thinking. The next question, what is the difference between an element and a compound? Well, first let's get down here and look at elements. Elements are pure substances made up of atoms with the same identity. So in an element, the element gold, every single atom has the identity of gold. Okay, we'll discuss how these atoms get their identity later in a later section, okay? But if I have some gold, then every atom is identical. It's the same kind of atom, right? Uh, we'll, we'll learn about what makes gold atoms gold atoms later, um, but they're identical. They have the same mass, they have the same um, number of particles, right? They're all gold. Now, the question is, what's the difference between an element and a compound? Well, let's look at a compound. In a compound, you have substances where you have two or more different elements chemically attached, okay? So maybe you have a gold and an oxygen are attached together. You have this kind of atom that's chemically attached to this other kind of atom. This will make a lot more sense when we start to look at chemical compounds and what they look like but we're gonna keep it simple right now, okay? I'll draw you a little diagram of some CO2 as an example. See here you have a carbon atom. Here you have an oxygen atom. Here you have an oxygen atom, right? these different kinds of atoms. They're chemically attached, okay? They're not just in the same container, they're actually chemically combined, right? The, the carbon atoms, I'm sorry, the oxygen atoms are magnetically attracted to the carbon atom here. Carbon, oxygen. We'll, talk, we'll get into the, into the details of this um, later in this unit, but for now, we just need to know that a compound is made up of different kinds of atoms, that are chemically attached with this magnetism here. Whereas uh, an element, elements are all made of, elements are all made of, I need to erase this, you know, gold. This is a gold atom, right? Now the gold might attach to the gold, but it's all gold atoms, right? They're all attached together. And actually, we would call this A. A used stands for gold. That's the symbol for gold. <clears throat> okay, so what's the difference? There's the two kinds of pure substances, elements, and compounds. The difference is compounds are made of more than one kind of atom. Compounds are made up of more than one kind of atom.
An example of an element. That is definitely a test question. What is an example of an element? Well, the one I have a picture of right here is gold. But you might also say um, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. Okay? There are tons of them. Tons of them. There are 100 and about 119 different elements that have been identified. They're the things you've heard of, like iron and silver and magnesium, right? Palladium and plutonium, uranium, right? Americium. All of these are elements, okay? It's a substance where you've got one kind of atom attached together there. That is an element. So we'll just go with gold, right? I'll write gold on my note. Uh, the Zoom will end before 11 o'clock, I think. Uh, I think it'll probably end before 11 o'clock. Okay. Next question, what is an example of a compound? Well, I drew carbon dioxide for you. Right, but water is a compound. Water is a great model compound. You got a couple of hydrogens, you got an oxygen, and they're attached together chemically. That's water, right? You got CO2, right? That's a compound. Because there's more than one kind of atom there, it's a compound. Oh, is H2O. And there's a way to make the superscript, but I forget how, so. H2O. We're getting into it, guys. We're gonna know what H2O means here pretty soon, right? Even though I just drew it. The next question is, what are the two kinds of mixtures? So if we go back to our little diagram here. You've got substances, which we've talked about, and you have mixtures. There are two kinds of mixtures. There are homogeneous mixtures, where they're evenly mixed, like this one. There are heterogeneous mixtures, where they are mixed, but not very evenly, okay? Homogeneous, is that capital? It's not supposed to be capital. homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. Um, so homo and the hetero, you guys have heard these terms before. Um, they're often used to identify um, aspects of human sexuality. You guys have heard of homosexuals, you've heard of heterosexuals. Well, we, when we look at the Latin or sorry, the Greek root of the word hetero, hetero means different. Okay, so hetero means different. So someone, for example, who is heterosexual, there's someone who looks for someone who's different from them, right? They're not the same sex as them. Um, so heterogeneous is where you can see the different parts. You can look, you can see the different, you can see the marshmallow, you can see the yucky, and I call these yucky charms. Um, you can see the, the rainbow, you can see the red balloon, the, I think it's a moon. Um, you can see the different parts in this mixture, okay? And even sand, if you look close, you can see there's red particles, there's black particles and white particles, and orange and, and kind of a tan. There's different colors of particles in the sand. These are heterogeneous mixtures because you can tell, just by looking at it, you can tell pretty easily that there are different substances there. Whatever this black stuff is, it's probably one kind of compound. Whatever this orange stuff is, it's probably a different kind of compound. So you know it's not all one kind of compound. You can easily tell that by just looking, okay? That's a heterogeneous mixture. It's a heterogeneous mixture. <laughs> I'm going to 
homogeneous mixture, on the other hand, if we go up here and we look at our little drawing here, we can see, right? Homogeneous, they're evenly mixed. And heterogeneous, they're not evenly mixed. They're mixed, but not evenly. So this one's sand, where you can see the different parts. But in a homogeneous mixture, the particles are so small and so evenly mixed that you can't tell that it's different stuff, okay? And this one's hard to explain to people because, well, we'll get into that in a second when we compare it to a compound, but salt water is a homogeneous mixture. If I take a glass of water and I take some salt and I stir it together, it seems that the salt disappears, but it actually doesn't disappear. It just mixes really, really well. It just mixes really, really well. So like here we've got some you know, particles of water. These are H2O uh, molecules, right, to the compound. And then we've got salt, which are the red particles. We mix it in evenly here. The reason you can't see the salt particles is because the salt particles are really small, really small, and they evenly mix. And so salt water is a homogeneous mixture. They're very evenly mixed together. So they're hard to distinguish. And so the difference between a hetero mixture and a homo mixture, here, I'll go ahead and draw a hetero mixture here for you guys, like sand. Right. right. A homo mixture is evenly mixed, and a hetero mixture is not. And because it's not evenly mixed, you can tell the different parts. You can tell the different parts apart. So Lucky Charms compared to a glass of milk, right? Milk is a very, very evenly mixed mixture. And so it's arguably a, homog a homogeneous mixture, right? Um, you could argue that milk is evenly mixed, although if you look close enough, you can tell its parts. It's kind of on the borderline. Uh, but salt water, vinegar, jello, vanilla ice cream. Okay, these are mixtures. If you take some vinegar and you mix it with water, that's, that's a mixture. And actually, the vinegar you buy already has water in it. So um, I go ahead and call it a mixture. But hetero means you can see the parts. Homo means you can't. Okay. So what's the difference? Okay. The difference between a homo and a hetero. How evenly are the parts mixed? How easy is it to tell that it's made of different substances? The next question is, what is the difference between a pure substance and a mixture? This is the most important question in a chemistry class. It is the most important thing to understand. It is the foundation of chemistry, is knowing that putting things together doesn't mean they attach. It doesn't mean they form these chemical bonds. So we go up here and we look at compounds, okay? Remember compounds, they are chemically attached chemically attached, where in a mixture, they're not. They're just in the same container together, okay? So if I took salt, what do I use for salt? If I took salt and I put it with water and I mixed them up really well, If these salt atoms attached to these water atoms, then it would be a substance. It would be a compound, right? If they attach together, it would be a compound, but they don't actually attach. They're just evenly spread. They're just standing around each other. They're not holding hands, okay? That's the difference between a, a mixture and a substance, a mixture and a compound, okay? In a substance, the particles, particles are chemically attached. Okay. In a mixture, they 
the particles aren't chemically attached. Not attracted, attached. Okay, so in a substance like compounds, they hold hands. In a mixture, they all just spread out evenly, okay? And this gets confusing because when you look at a glass of salt water, it looks like a pure substance. Homogeneous mixtures look like compounds, but they're not. Okay, that's the hardest question on this test. It's the most important idea that we need to understand from this section. Okay, in a mixture, they're just evenly spread or, or they're just in the same container. Sometimes they're not even that evenly spread, right? Okay. <sighs> Two examples of heterogeneous mixtures. We can go right here and we can find heterogeneous mixtures. You can see you know, pizza, Lucky Charms, beach sand, chocolate chip ice cream, the earth, a dump truck, uh, a, a ninth grader, like any anything where you can look at one container of stuff and tell that it's made of different stuff. That's a heterogeneous mixture, okay? A salad, you can look at a salad and tell, well, part of this is lettuce, part of this is that annoying purple cabbage stuff, part of it's carrot, part of it's dressing, you know, part of it's a bowl that's made of glass, right? It's a heterogeneous mixture. Why does a homogeneous mixture look like a pure substance? Looks like a pure substance because it's so evenly mixed. It's so evenly mixed that it looks, seems like the particles are evenly, are chemically attached. We're going to talk about the nature of these chemical attachments later. But for now, we just need to know that homogeneous mixtures look like substances, and they're not. They look pure, okay? There's no such thing as pure salt water. There's pure water, there's pure salt, but when you put them together, unless they're chemically attached, it's not pure, okay? It, it, from a scientific, from a chemistry standpoint, it's not pure. Why does salt water look like pure water? because it's so evenly mixed. Okay, it's the same answer here. They're very, very, very evenly mixed and it looks like it's all one stuff. Salt water looks like water and it's not. Does that make sense? All right, question number 11 just tells you to do what the first thing tells you to do, which is to draw this diagram. You're gonna draw this diagram. Let me go back to the top here. This diagram, composition of matter. Um, something I wish you guys would go through here and read about this chocolate chip ice cream because it talks about how you have a, you can have a heterogeneous mixture that's made up of homogeneous mixtures. And those homogeneous mixtures can be made up of compounds, and those compounds are made of elements. And then later in this unit, we'll learn how those elements are made of particles, protons and neutrons, okay? So draw this diagram on a piece of paper and you will have complete notes for the composition or the classification of matter. <laughs> 